Hello and greetings, friends. Welcome back to another Zero Option Science Fiction Universe Breakdown. Today we are going to be looking at Bolos again. The Bolo Universe for the honor of the Dino Chrome Brigade. So this Bolo video is going to be basically about the weapons loadout and ancillary systems of the Bolos. We're going to be looking primarily at the end line Bolo, the Mark 33, as our point of reference. I will be doing videos later on down the line describing the history of the Bolos, individual Mark models, the artificial intelligences behind them. But for now, because humanity doesn't like to talk about technical details, we're going to talk about the one thing everyone loves to talk about when it comes to big, bad war machines. Guns, guns, and more guns. Before we get into that, I'd like to invite you to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you want to see more content like this, leave me a comment in the description or in the uh, comments below. Let me know what you think. Maybe in the future we can uh, look at producing some videos where we do audiobook renditions of the Bolo stories. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, so we stated earlier, we're not going to look at the evolution of the Bolo this time. That is going to be the next video. This time we are going to look at the weapons loadout of the Bolo. So the first thing we've got is the Hellbore, main and secondary batteries on the on the Bolo. Vertical launch system for missiles, indirect fire systems, and the infinite repeater CIWS, or CWIS for shit. Sh so the first weapon on our list is going to be the Hellbore plasma gun, the main battery weapon on a Bolo tank. This weapon was originally designed for exoatmospheric combat on Concordia warships. And because, I guess, Concordia ships were designed by the same people who built Nazi superweapons, they decided to take uh, main battery naval guns and put them on land vehicles. Because, why the heck not, right? If it worked for uh, Mr. Clankety Clank uh, 1940s Germany, why wouldn't it work for a science fiction future? But in this case, it works out pretty good. So with all that out of the way, let's look at the Hellbore Plasma Gun. This bad boy fires a magnetically jacketed deuterium plasma bolt. Now, the information I've been using to gather all of this data is from the various Bolo books because there are no internet real sources about the Bolos outside of a few minor Wikipedia articles and a few ancient fan pages which are mostly dead now. So I have got the entire collection of Bolo novels and I have drawn most of the information from these so it is canon. This information was gathered from Bolo Rising, where Hector actually submerged himself into the sea to recharge his hydrogen slush and deuterium tanks to fire against the click, click, click aliens. So, like I said, this fires a magnetically jacketed deuterium plasma bolt. So this fires technically a projectile lo like most main battle tanks today. The projectile is cryogenically frozen deuterium superheated to fusion status, jacketed in a magnetic field, and fired out the main battery barrel like a projectile. It's line of sight, and depending on the size of the hellbore in question, can engage targets up into orbit. So, the first power shots of these on the smallest hellbores, which is the 20 to 25 centimeter range, ranges from half a megaton per second up to 5 megatons a second in the 200 centimeter hellbore main batteries of the Mark 33 Bolo. To put that in comparison, on the small end, the Hiroshima bomb was 18 kilotons, and a megaton is 1,000 kilotons. So half a megaton per second is 500 kilotons. Now, that means that it is 20, the smallest gun is 25 times stronger per shot than the Hiroshima bomb, all concentrated into an area the size of a basketball. That is power. Everyone wants to talk about how overpowered the Warhammer 40k universe is, and I'm the first one to agree. I'm a big 40k fan myself. Love me some titans, but when it comes to laying down destruction on a planetary scale, absolutely nothing can get it done solo like a bolo. So sorry, DS, you're right. Mark 33 Shiva, she's got it on you, buddy. Now, the Hellbore main battery replaced the laser and railgun batteries from the original Mark 14, or sorry, Mark 13 and under Bolo series. From the Mark 14 onwards, it had the 25 centimeter battery that was capable of engaging line of sight targets on the ground, but due to atmospheric attenuation, that's where your beam dissipates over distance, 
was unable to fire into orbit to protect its upper flanks. And then later on, this replaced the close-in weapon system, or CWIS, on the Mark 30 Bolos onwards, replacing the ion bolt infinite repeaters. Now, like I said, the 25 centimeter version was incapable of engaging orbital targets due to atmospheric attenuation. This was solved in the later versions, the 50 centimeter plus bores, including up to the 90 centimeter super hellbore, quote unquote, could engage low orbital targets with relative ease as long as they were within line of sight of the uh, bolo barrel. The later versions past the 90 centimeter range were capable of engaging upwards to medium to high orbit in ships as well as contending with vehicles on the ground that were getting substantially larger and more powerful the more the Concordia expanded out into the galaxy. The final iteration of the Bolo Hellbore weapon was called the Hell Rail. Now, it can be contested that this is a different type of Hellbore weapon as it's a Hellbore railgun hybrid and was meant to engage targets in high orbit repeatedly with one single shot, using up to 90 megatons a second per shot. Now, there are some apocryphal uses of the Hellbore in ground combat, but it was mostly advised against due to its largely uncontrollable destructive potential on the ground. The gun was repeatedly used by Turkey to engage Melkonian targets during the final war on a planet, when the Bolo was tipped on its side, but otherwise is primarily used as an anti-orbital weapons platform. Vertical Launch System otherwise known as VLS. These contain two types, light and heavy silos, light for tactical loads, interceptors, and surface-to-air missiles, as well as heavy silos for ICBM strategic engagement across the... These silos are magazine-fed from internal magazine systems. They are multi-programmable warheads who are capable of engaging on any kind of lock or defeating any sort of ECM that the psychotronic circuitry can detect and or circumvent. For those who are new to the universe, psychotronic circuitry is what the AI of the vehicles uses as a programming source. Think of it as Mr. Data's positronic net from Star Trek The Next Generation. These missiles have several capabilities, from tactical short-range missiles, from surface-to-air varieties, to close-in engaging soft targets, to ICBM strategic theater-level missiles with multiple, multiple independent re-entry vehicle targeted warheads, in the many megaton nuclear range. The silos can also be swapped out from missiles to include drones if they are ECM or quote unquote stealth platforms. Indirect fire system. Like the VLS missile system, the indirect fire system is one of the few systems on the Bolo to remain relatively unchanged throughout its evolution in terms of what it does and what it's comprised of. Still a projectile firing system, it can include either breech loading motors and howitzers of various calibers and sizes and firing rates. These range from the, well, ridiculous in caliber of the 30 centimeter breech loading motor systems to the absolutely ludicrous 240 centimeter howitzers on the Mark 33, which essentially will fire a pickup truck sized projectile at you 15 times per minute times four well, the vehicle moves upwards of 500 miles per hour at you. For my Warhammer fanboys out there, that is a level of artillery violence that he would give even the most base Krieger a emperor-sized erection. These secondary batteries provide an over-the-horizon attack method for the Bolo unit to basically keep the enemy head down, destroy as much material as possible Well the vehicle moves into position to use its line of sight main battery systems. The Infinite Repeater, close in weapon system, CWIS for short. These evolved from Gatling guns and laser packs on the first series of Bolos. The Gatling guns operated as a close in weapon system to defeat incoming projectiles and missile systems by throwing up basically a wall of lead right in front of the projectile, giving the projectiles something to slam into and exploding before hitting the target. The laser packs, well, they operated how you would expect a laser to operate. They target the projectile directly, no lead time, superheat it, and either vaporize or cause a premature explosion of the target. On the Bolo system, these are used for anti-personnel and light anti-armor duties, as the vehicle is so unimaginably large 
that getting in close and getting damage done to it by smaller swarms of units is a very real threat. So having a close-in weapon system is, well, quite frankly, a smart programming decision. From the Mark 15 Bolo onward, the Gatling gun and laser pack systems were replaced by ion bolt plasma repeater guns, which are lower yield but higher rate of fire versions of the Hellbore gun. From the Mark 31 onwards, those were swapped out with Hellbore Infinite Repeaters as power generation technology on the Bolos got to such a level where constant sustained fire from lower bore Hellbore guns could be maintained as an anti-personnel weapon. Because when you're fighting something literally called the Final War, why not waste everything including using small directed nuclear guns on enemy infantry? Ancillary Systems the first bolos to use shield emitters or battle screens were the Mark 19 due to an increase in power generation technology. This enabled the bolo to use a certain percentage of the energy fired at it and convert that into useful energy for itself being stored in its own battery cells. Track systems. The bolo uses a series of interleaved track systems like a caterpillar or most main battle tanks that is the most efficient system to traverse rough terrain. Again, with an increase in power generation in the future, these were also supplemented with anti-grav systems, which allowed the Bolo to take free flight, although in this phase it could not use its own shields or its main battery systems during flight due to the power generation required to lift a 38,000 ton vehicle off the ground and fire it through the air at 500 kilometers per hour. The sheer ludicrous of that statement does not escape me. Thinking of a city or a city block sized tank lifting itself 20,000 feet in the air and flying across the continent at the speed of a commercial airliner is, uh, well, beyond ludicrous, but at the same time, awe inspiring and, well, frankly, badass. The applique armor systems, which include Dura Steel, Dura Alloy, Flint Steel, Dura Chrome, and various nano bonded ceramic applique tiles which all amounts to space science fiction wizardry, which means it's a super advanced metal that we made up a name for, but it blocks plasma heat, takes damage, and sheds it off in a system and in a manner that is, well, quite frankly grounded in reality as well. Minor CWIS system, or close in weapon system, anti-personnel clusters, which include Gatling railguns and Gatling ion bolt infinite repeaters for real close in anti-personnel protection. So that is going to conclude this video where we look at the loadouts and ancillary systems of the Bolos. The next video in this series is going to be a evolution of the Bolo from the Mark 1 all the way up to the Mark 33 with some data on the Mark 34. Although it is sparse throughout the series, there is enough to put together a basic profile of the system. So with that, guys, if you like this video and you like this content, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment down below if you think I missed anything or you want to discuss something. And the fr a friend of mine, we are putting together a science fiction themed podcast uh, called The Dank Tech Cast, if you want to check that out as well. We uh, basically smoke a little bit of the devil's lettuce and we discuss science fiction universes and the technologies behind them. And if you'd like to get involved with that, let me know. All right, guys, with that, hope you all have a great day. Catch you next time. Zero out.